My husband killed the stalker. But I hope it's him who dies. I still remember this terrible thing. I started last December. And my husband, John, traveled throughout the European continent. I started in London. By November of this year, we live in Norway. A beautiful detached house near the town of Ervik. There are no other houses near the villa. When we were in Norway, I was a little uneasy. For months, I always suspected that someone was following us. He may be driving from London. They've been following us since then. But not until we arrived in Berlin. I just really noticed him. He's standing in the street. Watch me draw the curtains. John and I are on the first floor. The man is standing in our hotel, on the sidewalk ahead. This unforgettable figure, DJ Vu, is terrifying. I could barely see his face, because he hid him under his winter hat. But his green parka is very colorful. It made me feel a chill rush through my body. I should have noticed him sooner. In Barcelona, he's been hiking with us. I remember thinking, in mid-March, isn't it too hot to wear such a big parka? So he made a big impression on me. Did I see him in London too? How about in Paris? Where's Rome? You're scaring me, baby. But I'm really scared. Who the hell is he? Why follow us? Maybe you remember it wrong. It just so happens that they are all wearing green clothes. It's him. I think I met him in Belgium too. In that tavern. Do you remember the guy who drank a lot? The one who drinks Qingdao beer? Yes, I remember. See a man wearing the exact same green parka. I'm sure I remember correctly. I really saw it. John will only be more certain that I remember wrong because I was so drunk. Probably about what happened that night. Have the wrong impact. For him, there's nothing to worry about. I also want to believe it's just a coincidence, but I can't. And I sat there, John is sleeping, getting ready to hike all day in the woods. I was sitting by the living room window. Snow Lotus is located outside the glass window. The next day, John insisted on exploring the forest. He was convinced that what I said was a series of coincidences. You're thinking of a green parka. You see green parkas everywhere. John says, Before we set foot on the porch of the villa, bend over and give me a hug. It's called cognitive bias. I hope so too. But the guy in Berlin is looking at me. Okay, he might be a psychopath. But we're not in Berlin right now. We are in Norway. And he's not here. And John was skipping along. I reluctantly followed him. Around 3.45 p.m. The sun is setting. I lit the road with a flashlight. As we briskly walked back to the cottage, my eyes are on my watch and the sidewalk. I'm walking fast. John was panting behind me. Honey, can you slow down? He was gasping for air. You stop and take pictures for 20 minutes. I said I would go back early. Eilishing said, Don't worry, we walked about 30 minutes. Ah, oh, almost 40 minutes. And I sighed. Suddenly, I heard the sound of branches breaking. And I stopped. But John is still walking with difficulty. Shh, don't move. What's up? I heard it. John stopped and I turned around and I listened warily. Trying to find the source of the sound, I directed the flashlight in John's direction. He covered his eyes. Nothing. I slowly moved the light between the trees. I hold my breath. I can hear myself. Dirty throbbing sound. He could be an animal. It wasn't an animal. I screamed as quietly as I could. This time, the pop was much louder. This was followed by the loud rustling of the bushes. I looked in the direction of the second sound. That's when I was biased against something terrible. 
a green figure disappears into the flashlight. Unable to reach, the bushes swayed behind him. Did you see it? I asked about the sweat soaking through my face. Yes. John spat and took it from me. That's an animal. Come on. I want to go back. And as we walked, we listened. The forest is quiet. Around 4.20 p.m., we returned to the villa. It's early, actually. But I feel it's too late. It's pitch black outside. It gives me the creeps. This place doesn't seem to have any life. John turned the key in the door and went in. Turned on the main lights in the open plan living area. I closed the front door behind us and quickly locked him up. I'm going to bed. John muttered, stomping up the stairs to the bedroom. I'll be here for a while. I swallowed and replied. I stood in the living room, staring out the window. And all of a sudden, the motion sensor light goes on, right there. The man standing in the clearing between the villa and Suzuki. It's the man in the green parka. I was stunned. That person and I looked at each other for no more than five seconds. But those five seconds go by very slowly, because there has been no movement for a while. Lights out. And then the sound of glass breaking. And the sound of torn footsteps. The portrait lamp with the hood throwing something to break it. Lou, you see. John appears at the top of the stairs. Don't come down, I warn double. What was that? Did you break something? Don't go downstairs. I want to say a few more words. But was interrupted by a knock on the front door. Who is knocking on the door? There are no residents near us. John Mighty. There he is. You call the police. Don't come down yet. He didn't stop. He ran downstairs. But in this emergency, John cannot be trusted. I yanked the door open when he realized that I had always been right. He thanked him and took a breath of air. It's the man in the green parka. John, call the police. And I screamed, staring at this man. About. John. And I was sobbing. Maintain eye contact with the man at the door. Moon has not answered yet. My name is Peter. Let go of me. I'm crying. My daughter. She died here five years ago. The man explains. Ignore my cry. This is where he ended up forever. This is where the victim disappears. Never see again. Don't hurt me. I begged. I didn't follow you to hurt you. I came to warn you. I want to save you. Help me. Who's trying to kill me? 